The woman who comes after me will be a bootleg version of who I am. She will try and write poems for you to erase the ones I've left memorized on your lips, but her lines could never punch you in the stomach the way mine did. Starting out, it was so distressing because I was like, no, I don't want to be popular. I can tell you that when I first started this for years, I would go on stage with my paper. I didn't even memorize my stuff at that point. I would not look up, I wouldn't even talk, and then I would cover my face for years. I performed, and before I was done my last sign, I would drop my papers, I would run off, I'm not even exaggerating. And my friends were like, hey, can you wait for the crowd to at least clap for you? What is wrong with you? I ran across a TED talk that, where this woman, Sarah Kay, she performed this poem that I thought was storytelling and then she was like this is called spoken word poetry and this is what it is and that gave me the language for what I was doing which was very empowering. For me what's natural is expression and I always say that writing isn't my art. Expression is my art and I use different mediums to do the same expression. It's hence why you know I have illustrations and I do photography and I have videos and I have performance because I'm really like I think like doing multitude of those things really helps to push my point forward. I don't think social media has brought me success. I think it's been a great vehicle for my poetry to be brought to audiences. I think it's connected the two of us, but also like it's affected me in negative ways, just the way that it affects everybody else. I think as young people, we get wrapped up in it and we become obsessive and we're always checking our phones. and. What we don't realize is that when we're doing that, when we're diving into this, you know, it can cause a lot of anxiety, it causes depression, and there's lots of like negative like mental effects. And so we really have to like step out of that and kind of create balance. And the way that I do that is, you know, I don't have social media on my phone. Um, otherwise, I'm like endlessly scrolling all the time. Uh, when I talk to young people, I'm like, listen, like I need you to be in the real world. Like if we're not in the real world, how are we going to be in touch with our stories? So use social media, you know, use it for all the good that it does, but also remember it's, it's not real in that you should be healthy and you should be perfectly okay if social media and the internet disappeared tomorrow. So I guess it's like, I feel like I've always been a feminist. And I think being a feminist, I, intersectional feminism is very important. My feminism is listening to one another, understanding one another. It's not about being perfect. You know, I think we're in a place where there's so much like negative stuff going on and feminism is so important, but also what happens is we begin to then suddenly define as, you know, we have to be the perfect feminist. But I think I have to say that there is no idea, there is no actual definition of what the perfect feminist looks like, but the best we can do is our best. The best we can do is listen to one another and open up space for more dialogue. I think the Me Too movement is so important and I stand by it because for so long, you know, I was talking about, I've been talking about sexual abuse since high school and middle school. You know, that was, all of my work was about that. It was just about, you know, sexual trauma on women's bodies. And so when I was doing it as a young person in like 2005 or 2009, like I felt so alone. And now to see the Me Too movement and see this conversation being pushed into the mainstream, it's so amazing. And it's like, yes. And you're seeing the world get revolutionized overnight. Industries. You see the most powerful people at the top of these industries like go away. And that's such a sign of, sigh of relief, I think. And hopefully, I want future generations to look back and wonder why we ever needed Me Too because they've never had to deal with abuse. I think that's when me Too has been a success. I think that's when Milk and Honey has been a success, even though both of those things, you know, they've already, in my eyes, like, done so much. Yeah, and I do definitely see it trickling down into busy communities because, you know, brown people on the internet from all over the world are having conversations and participating in dialogue, yeah.